to live officially. Let's go and make sure that the Instagram is in play here. And it says we need to go live on the Instagram. Okay. A title. It's public. This is the part where I'm not as strong as I would like to be with the Instagram thing. So one second. Yeah, you know what? We're not gonna worry about the Instagram one tonight. <laughs> We're gonna just go. We're gonna flow. Maybe we can do a chop a chop up um, remix later on for Instagram. You know. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get to you all, which is the most important part. Okay, so um, well, if you're out there in internet land, thank you so much for joining us. So, okay, we're going to talk about your approach to making comics and the process and production and the many different paths to getting to that point. Um, let's go ahead and introduce everyone. So this is the C3 um, a live stream for today's topic and the many ways to start making comics. So um, there are many ways to get to the dance. It doesn't matter what you wear as long as you get there. Okay. So we'll start with uh, Danielle, uh, at Danielle Dean. And that's Danielle, if you're listening and not watching this, that's with the D-A-N Yell, like Y-E-L-L, Dean on Instagram. And then we also have Shandu Tenetti um, uh, at Tenetti.art, also on social media if you want to check out Shandu's work as we are talking about the process of making comics and just getting into all that type of you know, minutia and things like that. I think I said that word right. Um, let's see. Okay, so... I am going to go to the live comments, and we have Sydney Kitt, our fierce leader, saying hello all from Facebook land out there. Hello, Sydney. Thank you for the tech support. I really need it. <laughs> so apologize in advance if I'm sucking on the cock drop. I just am getting over the, the little C. I don't want to call it the big C, but the little C. So, yeah. Anyways, good to be here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot to Danielle, and just kind of, Danielle, if you want to give a brief introduction of um, who you are and, and a little bit of your background and what you do. And then, and then we'll go to Shanti as well. And then we'll start getting into the comments. So tell them who you are in Black Panther screaming voice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Danielle. I'm originally from Orlando, Florida. I've always been into drawing. Um, and I went into I, studying animation specifically. Um, but I've always had love for comics. Like as a kid, I was drawing up like comic books. Uh, based on like TV shows, but also like other IPs like Peanuts, um, Garfield. Um, yeah, so currently I'm a freelance like animated illustrator as well as a graphic designer. Uh, but I also like to do comics on my own time. Okay, awesome. And um, Chandu, let's go ahead and move, pivot to you as far as some of your background and claim to fame or on the rise if you know, if you're if you're a budding star, which Whichever one, whichever it is. What was today? Wednesday? Sure. Yeah. So it's Wednesday. Yep. So. That's good for a Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm Chandu. Um, I'm, um, yeah, I'm, claim to fame is a stretch, but like I'm starting out in the world of comics. Um, so I've been, so like similar to Daniel, like I grew up um, reading lots of newspaper comics, um, always interested with, you know, um, by that medium um and like i would do a lot of doodling and drawing of like those characters and disney characters and so on um and then like everybody does sooner or later i'm sure in this in this industry like ran into the book understanding comics by scott mcleod and that really opened my mind to like um comics as like a storytelling format um and then like read some of the seminal stuff like Watchmen and like some of Neil Gaiman's comics and yeah so got me really inspired and I've been trying to get more into the world of comics so in terms of being published so far my contributions have been mostly to the Scribbler and which is like a local uh, comic magazine and um, and O Comics which is another local comics anthology so not not much more beyond that, but I tend to stay, you know, just for convenience purposes in the 
digital land while making comics. I have not, I do not know how to do traditional comics. So I'm here to learn. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you know what? Um, there are all, again, many paths to get into comics. So essentially comics is sequential art, right? Either a combination of pictures or images in sequence or letter forms or type. It's not always text and, and images. Sometimes the text is, is the driving factor. Sometimes it's just the images without text and what's not said is just as important as what is sometimes more commonly um, said as in like Sunday comic strips and things of that nature. So um, my background is uh, comics. Um, I guess I'm a comics graduate, MFA in comics. So an academic, comics academic, as well as a noodler and doodler. I like to do comics, always have, fourth generation comic book fan. And, um, you know, so I basically, any type of sandbox I can get into to making comics or zines of something of that nature that allows you to be creative, I'm pretty much probably going to go ahead and find my way getting dirty in that sandbox. So, um, but uh, let's talk about you all. So uh, starting with Danielle, um, you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some flowers right now. You got quite a bit of buzz um, at the last space that we, um, that we were at when we, um, when we all looked at your table and noticed that you had comics in the form of, record like albums lps it was almost as if you produced an lp but it was actually a comic or a zine and um so we're gonna start out way out here with the with the more novelty experimental the art comics as we used to call them in the, in the early millennium um and, and the alternative comics you know days um and then we can maybe work our way into more traditional stuff you know that um chandu was was lamenting a few seconds ago. <laughs> all right, so Danielle, talk to us about how that came about. I mean, I know we all talked your ear off at the show, but um, uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to see this comic, uh, I had to get one in person. It's it's definitely like worth holding and, and, and checking out. So um, record, album, comics, talk to us. Yeah, that, um, that comic specifically was made for like a CC80 comics class where we had like the freedom to make anything. Um, and I wanted to specifically focus on like the Paul McCartney uh, conspiracy because I just found out about it. I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. It's a rabbit hole I really dove into. And I thought, what's a good way to like portray that? And they do the back, like the back masking is like a clue is the it's the LPs, but like in reverse, plain reverse, that they're secretly telling people that Paul is dead. And I thought it'd be a cool way to like show that um, visually. Uh, I can probably present. Oh, yeah. Did you want to present? Uh, if I if I could. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let me let me see if I'm too old to figure this out. <laughs> okay, present. Shit. I don't want to share my screen, right? So, uh, hold on. Nope, I don't want to share mine. Uh, hold on. Let me. Um, oh, let I, me think I, not... I think I can. Oh, share. okay. Yeah, maybe maybe it'll prompt me for permission. There we go. Okay. At okay, the stage. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is how I start off uh, sketching uh, wise. I have like a giant sketchbook, and because it was like about eight by eight originally. Um, and so I just measured out that circle size and started sketching in pencil and marker about like where things would be placed. And that's, that was like my initial process before scanning it in and digitally inking it. Um, because I'm not a great, like I'm not a very clean artist. So I need that digital like help to refine it. Uh, and here is just some old this is this was the original uh, back of the LP cover, uh, where I only had like a few for the class. I wasn't finished, but I wanted to finish it someday. And uh, last year, I just finished it and was able to share it uh, at space. And this was all digital, um, the back. Oh, the back. I thought it, I yeah. thought it was on um, DIY. Well, well, it's still it's digital, you know, it's a, a lot different of DIY, DIY, right? But it's still DIY. But yeah, I actually thought it was just like regular, but it's cool. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, um, yeah. So, so this was so a class I, project. 
Yeah, it was originally a class project. And what I, was yeah. the response to the instructor or and to your peers when you busted this out like, like in its final okay. form? Yeah, they really liked it. Yeah, it's something my teacher, like Emmy at the time, said it was something that she's never seen before. Uh, so that was this was just something I wanted to go back to someday. It just took like three or four years to get back to. Um, and originally I sketched it in pencil, scanned it to ink it, but then I printed it out and colored in with markers and highlights. Uh, but the later ones, I just downloaded like a digital marker brush set. So like on Photoshop Clip Studio, I just colored in. Uh, yeah, because this is all compared to the other one is all digital brushes while uh, this one was all hand pencil, not pencil, marker, um, yeah, marker and highlighters. It looks seamless, honestly. Both both of them look seamless. It looks like it's just very fluid and everything is a family and it goes together well. And I, I want to be able to tell where the where things start and where things stop. It, maybe if I really, really decided to look at it, but as a whole, just as, as, a, as a package, I mean, it looks seamless, so it looks really good. And and for anyone else um, watching, especially, um, you know, if you're just wanting to learn about comics, um, Danielle mentioned that, you know, her approach to comics is a little bit more messier at first and all that, not as refined, and then going digital. Many, many, many of us, for as long as comics have been, there are many, many people that are either the more, um, like, technical, like, like um, meticulous and clean and everything like that. It looks like there's no eraser smudges or smears. And there's those of us that just kind of sculpt. You know, when we make comics, we just start with a mess or a lump or a few chicken scratch lines, and we just over the layer it, layer it, layer it, layer it. And then with the addition of dish, uh, digital, that has obviously made us have another, basically a virtual light box so we can add layers and, and um, subtract or add an as if and subtract the process. So, um, yeah, if you're messy, if you're a messy artist, there's most definitely still a place and a path for you. Um, yeah, so we'll just we'll just make a mess up once, you know. So, so let me ask you a really important question in regards to this record comic. Mm -hmm. If can we read it backwards? Um, I think that depends on the the one because, like, for this one specifically, it would be um, clockwise. Like, I try to make them all clockwise because that's how you the clock. Oh. Um, because there's these two, these like four, these no, it's not four. These last three panels where it is like chronologically, um, while the other ones are just like incidences, mm -hmm. which you can, it doesn't matter which way you read, but for these uh, last three, it matters chronologically. Um, yeah, same for this one. It's like these four panels, it, it, it matters. So you can like get the exact uh, example that happened in real life or the exact interview. Uh, nice. While this one is more like clues, so you can just bounce around and mm -hmm. Read it on your own. That's cool. I mean, I love I love that there's a lot of range to this too. I was I was halfway making a joke, just being the cringe lord that I am. But um, but uh, you got me with the whole functioning part of it. So, uh, um, all right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, this again, this is a novelty, more unique approach to there are boundless opportunities that might present themselves to you when it comes to your creative pursuits and creating comics. Let's pivot over to Shandu. Shandu, talk to me about your first comic experience, making experience, whether it be just a one, even if it was a one image or maybe it was character design, because a lot of times there's a whole bunch of steps that we might skimp over and think, oh, we just do the comic strip, we'll just go to thumbnails. There's a whole lot of things that, that happen um, along the way from the first seed of the idea. You know, so how did the inspiration strike you and then, and then how did you make your way to an actual image? You know? Yeah. So Interestingly enough, there's a local artist named Canada, and she has a, a art exhibition she does uh, each year called Comics versus Art, where she takes, like, curates a bunch of uh, well-known art pieces and has comic artists reinterpret them. Um, so the first time I really dared to, like, make something original, you know, that was comic-ish was that. So, like, there was a painting of um, like this old, I believe like Japanese painting of like uh, like the Zen master 
um, who's like looking at a butterfly and like there's a verse that goes with it that talks about like that master dreaming of a butterfly and uh and so you know um and it talks about how the dream was so vivid and real that when he woke up he couldn't tell if it was him dreaming of a butterfly or if a butterfly was dreaming it was him um uh, and so like I, I thought that was really cool so like i was like okay what can i do with this so um yeah so my i i wish i was pre more prepared than like you know kind of like danielle was and be able to show it but like basically you know the butterfly was the central idea <laughs> so um yeah so so my my approach there was um to say okay how can i depict this person waking up into into reality right so it started off with panels showing the 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 wise man the the zen master with with his eyes closed right so like the panels which means he is boxed in his reality right and then he opens his eyes but then outside of the panels the butterfly is flying around right so like so just as a way to like push beyond like what's what's real right so like but the irony is like you're still looking at a flat image but you have that difference of you know okay there's some of it is panels you want to read it like a comic but when you look at the butterflies they're all over so like yeah so it it, it breaks the linear flow so that it was it was really enjoyable very nice very nice i like how you were, were not afraid to tackle first of all i love the storytelling aspect even though you didn't have an image to show us um just the way you talk about it and describe it where it's almost let, letting us allowing us to to put in um you know our own well, you know what? Um, there's always somebody that that's 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 very clever and very prepared. Um, gotta love our 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 um our viewers because they happen to actually already have the link candy. Oh, so somebody nice. is is got some Google food <laughs> already. Right, hey. So so let me put this in the chat and then we'll go ahead and share it real quick. So there it is. So those of Thank you, who, you. Yes. So those of you who want to, should I should I click on it? Let me. Oh, okay. I can try to click on it and see if um, and then go into the the nether realm of of um endless windows and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, because it does, it is worth showing, right? So ah, here we go. Okay, I can see it. So now let me see if I can share my screen, and allow our viewers who are um checking it out. Can everyone see that? Yeah, there it is. Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, look at that. So, and I liked a little bit of a blurry, out of focus background because that's all the rage these days, right? When you when content people, YouTube, and all, you even got a out of focus background on yourself. I know. It's an out of focus background on <laughs> me. I got I got laundry or something on the on the <laughs> um, <laughs> on the couch. Yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm authentic. Okay. Anyways, um, but yeah, um, and the color palette, it's it's, it's like you're matching this already. But green and purple. Let me go and scroll through. I'm getting distracted. You know, shiny objects in me. Um, Okay, let's see here. Yeah, that's so pretty much it. It's yeah, yeah. It's that little verse that it's it's like there's a whole mm -hmm. uh, book um, that this passage is taken from. So like, yeah. yes, um, yeah. So this was your first sequential comic effort, then. Yes. Awesome. You know, um, yeah. It's not it's not always easy to to jump in and do this. You know, sometimes. Um, but but it's also part of the thrill, I think. Is, is learning to play and learning to do this, you know. Um, but cool, very much so. Okay, so let's talk about the collaborative process. Let's pivot to that. So um, thank you so much for both of you for sharing your work with us. And let's see here. Okay, let me get, I'll leave this up for a little bit and just so people can check it out while we talk. Collaboratively, let's go ahead and um, talk about Chandi, I'll go ahead and stay with you for now. Um, uh, you are working with one of our other, um, you know, members of the group, 
as well as um, you know Scr Scribbler Jack, uh, you know the Columbus Scribbler. Yeah. So, can you elaborate a little bit on what that collaborative process has been like? And is this your first pro um, collaboration? It is. Um, so, yeah, it is my first collaboration, and the way it's worked has been uh, that uh, Jack had a script, um, and then you know, uh, basically. He ran the idea by me. I was really excited. And then like when I took a look at the script, I was I said, you know, I looked at it from the point of like, okay, how does uh this work with like page breaks and page turns and such? Um and so suggested some edits. Um and you know I was I swear I was not trying to fudge the page numbers. Like, you know, he 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 agreed to pay me by page, but that was not why it went from five to eight pages. Uh, but yeah, but it was, you know, it was a short story and it was, uh, just really this, evocative. This, so. is a, this is a magnum opus now. Now it's a graphic novel. <laughs> we, need, we need a minimum of a thousand pages, Jack. On yep. Yeah. It'll get there now. I mean, so this <laughs> so is going to go. It's still, it's still in process then. It is. Yes. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's going to go in an anthology eventually. So he has yes. some other stories that other artists are doing. Um, hey, Kelsey. Um, hey, Kelsey. So. And uh, yeah, so I don't know how much detail you want to know about the collaborative process. Well, well here, I, I can ask you some, some questions. We'll yeah. Go, you know, to get into the leads and all that. And then, Daniel, we'll, we'll pivot to you as well um, here. So, what was the most, I don't want to say shocking because, it, you know, we're not being alarmist here or anything, but what was the most um, steepest learning curve of working from working with just you as? as a whole creator versus collaborating with somebody else. Mm. And um, so do you, is there a moment or, or a part of that where you're like, ah. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And several. Uh, you're, taking and, in, you're taking in air. So. Yeah, yeah, I have to yeah breathe deep. I mean, it, it's been nothing short of awesome. But like, um, I think the hard part for me was like sort of giving up some of the control of the layout. Like, uh, because I mean, Jack wrote the script and I'm doing just the inking and there's somebody else who's going to do the lettering and the coloring. So, you know, so as I'm thinking through what the panels are going to have, I've been, you know, the, I, I did really quick thumbnails and I, you know, kept sending them to Jack as I was doing them. Uh, but I was like, well, some of these panels are really wordy. I want to like edit that and like, write, you know, make them shorter or like, um, like try to decide the composition of where I want the word balloons and like, you know, some of them belong in one balloon, but or belong in one panel, but I want to put them in a different panel. And like, so that kind of push and pull, like, you know, I'm like, if I was just doing this, like I, I, I could do it and like do justice to, you know, the script, but not, not my control, not my control. So like I had to back away and I'm like, okay, I'll just give the artist plenty of room to put their word bubbles the way they want. And like, um, so yeah, that was, that was definitely a stretch for me, like giving up that control. So, so was, was, was Jack a little bit resistant at all? Or was it a, or was it just a going back and forth process? Like, okay, like, like in certain instances, this is definitely something I want to, I want to keep because it has a certain impact or order I had an intention with it versus, oh yeah, okay, that, that you know, yeah, that works. Yeah, I mean, there was some of that. Like, uh, for example, like I, the part that really worked was for me to like lay it out, you know, with the page turns and be like, okay, this moment right here is probably good to end the page on so that then mm. you want to turn the page and like see what happens next instead of like, showing it on the previous page or whatever. There were nice. a couple pages that were like, that had a lot in them. So I, I was like, okay, let's let's break this up. But then like, I had to figure out what makes sense to like put on one page versus the other. Um, but I think in terms of words, I didn't feel comfortable like trying to like, you know, edit the, the, the dialogue itself. Yeah. Because like you know that's that's Jack and that's his, that's his voice. And, like, yeah. yeah. So like yeah, I I, I don't you. feel like yeah. I mean I would like to have fewer words, but then mm. like you know um, again, if you know that I could I can leave it up to the letter's sensibility to like figure out you know mm -hmm. how to place those and still do justice to all the 
all the language. Yeah. So, well, I've also worked with Jack and collaborated with Jack as an artist and to Jack script. And at least you weren't stuck on stupid like I was, where I kept thinking the whole main thing was a Christmas tree. And he kept saying it's not, it's not a Christmas story. And in my head, I still kept, like it took I don't know how many Christmas trees I drew because we were doing gnomes. <laughs> And then my, I was just, I had a blind spot. I get blind spots and I get stuck on stupid as I call it. Mm. And and eventually I was, and I was frustrated because I, I was like, man, these Christmas trees suck. I can't stand drawing these things. He's all, well, that's okay because it's not a Christmas tree. <laughs> and, and finally it clicked. I was like, oh, and then, and then I was free. <laughs> so yeah. anyways, but mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. So let's pivot over to you, Daniel. Yeah. Um, have you had much experience experiences when it comes to collaborating with others in, in making comics? Yeah, I've mostly done my own personal comics. My collaboration has mostly been in the animation space, which mm -hmm. could equate somewhat to comics because I'm, as the animator, I'm the one drawing everything while I'm usually given a script and, and or like a voiceover. Like a voiceover helps a lot because it gives like an emotional tonality rather than just a reading it off and I don't know it's pretty ambiguous when you're just reading it off. Um, and I would get the script and our voiceover and then I would draw a rough, uh, a rough storyboard animatic, which could equate to thumbnails. And after approval, I'd like finalize those drawings. Okay, and what is some of the, um, we kind of just already hinted at it, but what is some of the, what, what are the pros and cons, would you say, like when you're working on the comic, you doing sequentials that are going to be still images 2D, well, still 2D versus the animation and having to work within a pipeline of, of production. What 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 is the, the miss me with that? I'm so glad I'm here or, or, or you know, or hit, you know, not to hit, like, like I love this part of, of, of doing this part. So what would you say is, is the push and pull when it comes to comics? And then the same question when it comes to the animation. Like, what do you find that you, you you look forward to, and what do you look? What do you find that you're dreading? Yeah, I really, I really like comics and that you can convey so much uh, faster rather than just drawing every single like movement. Uh, while comics is more freedom to like go over like a span of time or like focus on or hone in on a moment rather than drawing like every second, every step, every little movement compared to animation. So I like the freedom and the ability to share with that along with like you can share stuff online and people can read that or you can like print out something and just hand it to someone rather than animation you gotta like have a little video and you gotta find a link online and you can just <laughs> not have your phone out or your laptop your ipad out to share now have you all have you worked on you work digital. Well, actually, we'll, we'll get into the process in a little bit. I still want to deal with the collaborative process. I want to ask you both, and Daniel, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, is there any aspects of the collaborative process when it comes to creating comics in any method, any form, digital or analog, that you've yet to experience? Like, have you wanted to, maybe you wanted to be uh, the writer instead of drawing, you didn't want the burden of the art, or or is there anything, is there any role that you, or an editor or something that you've yet to, like, you know, scratch that itch yet that, that you would look forward to, to trying out. So Danielle, we'll start with you. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting to branch more out into writing. Like I've gone into like a screenwriting thing, so I'd really like to branch out more into writing. Um, as for like the art roles, like inker or color, like it all depends on the project itself because I'm at that point where it's like, I'm not gonna accept everything that's like presented to me. Um, I wanna be really like picky with like the projects that I work with. So when it comes to like creating comics, like if it's not your particular comic or your idea, then then you're more like, okay, I will be, I will do this part of production on the comic as opposed to I'm doing everything, you know, like I would if, if I was, you know, the, the originator of the story. Is, is, that, is that what I'm hearing? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I've okay. investment in my own work and you've got to divide how many hours yeah. a day or a week. Yeah. And we all know comics doesn't pay that much. So it's like, you know, the money like the money, you know, if there's money, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like I can be spending any time on my on my story or I can be spending any time on someone else's story and and re realizing their dream while mine stay, mm -hmm. you know, in a box somewhere. So 
How about you, Chanji? Let's let's talk about any role yet that you are curious about when it, when it comes to comics that you've yet to that you that you would like to try. Yeah, I mean, I I'd have to agree with Danielle. Like, I think I would like to do more writing and then see, uh, and then you know, not be the one doing the art like <laughs> just to just to see like you know where where my blind spots are like that's part of what i'm excited about with this collaboration with jack is that you know i i'm coloring has not been traditionally my strong suit i mean i'm okay doing it but like um i'm excited to see somebody who's like you know who's done it a lot of times before like where what they can do with what i'm giving them and whether like you know it even is up to snuff for what they're expecting you know so um yeah so i would like to do something similar with my writing as well yeah so what i'll do is weigh in um for my own experiences because you know i can echo very similar to both of you uh and when it comes to thing that sticks out the most to me when it comes to different roles I've played when it comes to producing or, or uh, making comics. Um, I find myself getting fatigued with one aspect, whether it be the art chores or whether, and sometimes I just want to play in somebody else's world and I would rather collaborate. Hey, right. I'll, I'll draw that. And I don't have to think about the world building or anything that I can just interpret and, and work on just trying to execute and get it into the image, you know, the, the visual, you know, um, realm. And then there's other times where I'm like, you know what, I don't want to draw this, but I would be happy to write this. And I would love to see somebody else's voice, you know, kind of like what they can do and see if there's what kind of harmony happens. And then there's the big one where I've actually been the publisher, the in charge person, editor. And I, and, and that was, I learned every mistake that you can make. And this was before Kickstarter. Kickstarter, this is how long it took to make this anthology. This anthology was 400 plus pages. Um, and it was over 60 different creators on it, including Tim Seeley, uh, Jeff Brown, you know, there was a who's who that was in it. And little old me didn't know in design or how to lay out a book. And um, and at the time, I, you know, I was I was still, it was in my toxic days. And so I was like, hey, I'm in charge and all that. What I learned so much more on that was how to be diplomatic. And that you have to have soft skills and you can't sit there and just, you know, be um, hard mastering like that. Because, first of all, it is a collaborative process and you have to be open to to things as they come up and all that. Though. So um, but it took four years to make, but we got it out. It's available. It's called BAM2. Um, um, but, yeah, it was. Um, but it's what made me go into graphic design and, and get my degree because <laughs> I was like, I'm never going to be without. The knowledge to put together a book now obviously you lose it if you don't use it so i have to go brush up on my design skills again um but yeah so that was that was me taking on the most hardest possible method short of like kicking down marvel's door and saying i'm in charge now <laughs> so, right running running a, a, a huge corporation so but um i do find that i like to play under the sandboxes and sometimes i don't want the burden of having to do every single aspect of creating comics um sometimes i just want to do this part of it you know um, and, and sometimes it's just fun. Like another member, Carl Lucas from C3, we'll sit there and work on our individual comics. In fact, we might get together this Saturday over here at, at Porters and, and Pickerington, an unofficial meetup for, for C3 members or whoever wants to join us. But um, we'll just pull, up, pull a piece of paper or, or cardstock and we'll just collaboratively jam on a character, a headshot or a strip and try to trip each other up. So sometimes it, it can be more fun you know, and just trying to see who can get the, get the better of the other person, not like technically with the art, but more like, you know, getting somebody's goat and kind of troll and all that. Though. Sometimes it comes out with a really funny comic and sometimes it's just a mess and I'll never see the light of day. So anyways, um, I'm with you all as far as writing and drawing. I think I'm, I'm, I'm aligned with both of you when it comes to those two things that sometimes you just want to hand it off to somebody else and see, let's make some harmony here. Okay, we're going to get into now production production stuff we've already kind of hinted at that but can you walk us through your typical creative I'm, I'm messing up my words typical creative process when developing a new comic okay so we kind of went with the origin of the two um, pieces that we've already shown from each of you but let's talk about workflow Let, let's kind of niche down and say workflow right now what is your current workflow when it comes to producing a comic strip or a comic um 
And then maybe what we'll do, and I'll ask this question again, where would you like your workflow to be at one day? Like if you could perfect it in, because that's like a never evolving thing I've learned for me personally is like, I'm never making a comic the same way. I'm always making it a different way. And I wish I kind of had some like consistency normal, um, you know, so um, we've got people in the comment section also sharing their experience as well, but let's go ahead and start with uh, Danielle. Danielle, what's your process? Ideas waiting to come. You're about to pull it out of the other and now, so. Yeah, I, I start off with um, really rough sketches, like on little notebooks. Um, I, I draw like the messy drawings, and then I start laying it out uh, like really bad. I don't know if you can see that's probably blurring it out. Um, yeah. Um, I'll probably share my screen too. Um, yeah, so I draw little like very bad sketches of like the comic page or like the layout and then I like transfer that onto like uh, working digitally through uh, Clip Studio uh, and I'll just share my screen again sure uh, I saw you working on this little thumbnails at, at the last meetup and, and everything so. yeah I'm, I'm redrawing or redoing my uh, Florida comic uh, which was originally like a web comic but I was getting sick of like having to color and getting the right colors down. And that's just what I found out in the process is that I don't enjoy color picking as much, uh, but I really enjoy inking. Um, so I'm transferring over to that. But yeah, I start off with like a rough layout and I create the panels and then roughly sketching out where characters would be um, some speech bubbles, and then inking on top. So the, you have more than one approach to creating comics. And for those that are wondering, this is Clip Studio Paint EX, which is, I believe, the most premium version of the application, but a comic making program for those that may not know. Um, yeah, that, the work is beautiful, by the way, especially the color work and all that, though. So. Um, is there anything you'd like to adjust or change moving forward about your workflow, or, or do you feel like you're pretty, you're, you're pretty much in the groove now with, with this type of workflow? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of in the groove, but like I would like to move on to being more traditional in like the early stages, especially since I look at a screen all day from work too, like as a designer, and then I go back home and I draw, but it's also on a screen again. So um, I would like to do the roughs on like the, the correct sizing or at least like a transferable size uh traditionally whether it's like pencils and then someday moving on to like inks and just adjusting that and adding speech bubbles in, in clip studio i would like to someday like ink rough sketch and ink traditionally and then scan that in and i can just plop down um screen tone effects or speech bubbles like at the end i don't want to look at screens all the time <laughs> so yeah. analog wise would, would you prefer to work at a manga size like the, with the leader paper or the traditional 11 by 17 with the you know 10 out by 15 image area well, um comic boards like first board yeah I've, I've always like read manga and that's just sort of like the inspiration like i've had uh from like being like 12 year old like onwards mm -hmm. um so i would like to utilize like that manga size and okay so it just so happens that this saturday should the weather and health permit it um talking to carl again if we get together and hang out i was literally going to bring the leader paper like the manga paper to show him in, in some comic boards and he actually saw when, when we had that conversation in text today and he actually got some so if we get together on saturday we might be working on manga paper so if you can make it out you know i'll, I'll put the details in the discord and we'll talk about the discord towards the end of the show um yeah i mean maybe I'll, i can give you a few sheets to play around with if you are able to make it so um but yeah so okay um traditional analog how about tool like we talked about paper what about tools what would you like to work with analog wise is there a certain type of ink uh uh, technical pen, brush, pencil, or a full other medium that, that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, yeah, I, I like ink pens, um, ink jet pens. Um, yeah, like 
back in like community college, I was studying like traditional art, like I learned painting, um, but I was really into like shading and um, inking. Uh, you could say it wasn't like comics, but it was just like these like realistic uh, uh, ink drawings. Um, so I'd like to go back into like that feel and doing more. Yeah, doing okay. more traditional. So, so technical pen is, is more is more that you're comfortable. So, oh. so you don't. Uh, what about nib or brush? Is that something that you you would explore as well? Yeah, yeah, I like I like using nibs as well. Like it's something that I've I didn't appreciate as much when I was like in art school about <laughs> mm -hmm. playing around with it because I it, it would just dry out or just not make the correct curve. But playing around with it now, mm -hmm. I really like uh, the nib feel. And like it makes the, you slow down. You have yeah. to slow down to use it, and, and sometimes there's there's a um, Sometimes that's a strength, knowing when to slow down and having to breathe and take stock and and put the line down instead of like just going for it with a technical pen. You have oh, I have all the ink in the world. <laughs> so, and I um, like the varying thickness so we can just yeah. like smooth in and yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I, I was looking at um, Udon Studios and some like, like uh, manga and animation type of art and looking at how thin the contour line is versus what I use for my ink and comics. And then they let everything else do the work for for them. And I was just thinking, how do I get that line weight? How do I get that thin line? Is it a nib? Are they using a nib? Does not put technical pen? So um, yeah, I mean, who knows? We might be um, playing with nibs one day at, at one of our meetups. But um, is there anything else you'd like to add about your um, about your uh, your workflow? Um, no, I just really bounce around a lot. Like I'm right now working on a bunch of different pages, and I should be like working in order. Um, but I'm sort of bouncing around between uh, chapters too. Um, so being able to break it down by chapter has helped me like bounce around more than just doing like page one, page two, page three, page four. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's helped like my brain um, not get too bored or too locked in. Yeah, some of the advice I heard and, and from a friend named Les who's worked on a bunch of other stuff in animation and um, Les McLean was he inks the parts that he likes to ink first, you know, and like the panels or the parts that are more fun to ink, and then the ones that are more the ones that are more tedious and work, then he kind of saves those for last. So, um, yeah. Anyways, but um, well, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, let's go ahead and pivot to Chandu. Uh, Chandu, when it comes to your workflow, um, let's yeah, uh, talk talk to us about what what you use and in, in your approach to making comics from idea inspiration to actual execution. Yep. Um, again, like um, so. Typically, for the ones that um, that have been like one shots or one page things or like a few pages, um, I if it's if it's a few small number of pages, I don't write a script for it. Like I tend to do thumbnails um, but I've been trying to focus on my digital process um, so what I end up doing is like um, just have like start with a very basic like blocking sketch like you know so it's just stick figures um, so I know where where things are um, and then next step is to try and make those into pencils um like pencils i mean it's still digital but like it's much more rough or or like it's it's more it's better defined than the stick figures but like it's at least a little you know but it's still very loose um and then once i'm happy with where that is um then i can go and like ink that up and so like it yeah i, I just do layers um and recently i started and this has worked well for me i i know jam you do this like you use lots of different colors to do your pencils um i have not quite gotten the hang of that but like um at the very least i try to use use a different color for the pencil and then like i just turn the opacity way way low and then i can ink over top of it um so yeah but if it's a longer form i've been working on like a longer comic so with that I needed to make sure that I wrote it out first because like I knew I was not gonna get to the pages that I wanted to work on anytime soon. So I was like, first let's 
just put all the ideas in some kind of like digital format. Like I, I have like a digital notebook, like very lo-fi thing where I just dump all my ideas and then try to like craft each issue, um, like a rough outline. And then like I write out the script and then I'm like, okay, when I'm reasonably pleased with the script and I have like, you know, I was, I was setting a goal for myself to do like 22 pages ish for, you know, so it would be like an issue length. Um, so once I was happy with that, then I started like drawing them. So, so I wanted to ask, what app do you use? Is it Trello that you use for the digital notebook? And then what do you use? That way you can just copy and paste it and throw it into whatever other app that you use to actually format the script. Um, so it's more, um, if they're like me, they're going to ask those questions. What are you using? Like, what kind of pencil is that? What kind of thing is that? Right. What kind of magic tool is that that's going to make me do it? What 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 time and hard work and focus and and, and yeah. drilling should should probably Actually, let me know. No. I, but, um, I mean, I wish I could say I had like a super smart system, but it's uh, mostly like it's just a bunch of text files. Like it's uh, so basically, I open up a very basic editor. Like in my day job, I'm a I used to be a software programmer. I'm I'm now an engineering manager, so like I'm comfortable with text editors. So mm -hmm. like you know, I don't even go to Google Docs or like a word processing so you're program. Like, it's like, you're doing Notepad or Atom or something? Basically, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. And so like, I just have a bunch of those. Um, there's some like a extension that kind of gives it a little bit of smart. So like mm -hmm. it's, it kind of acts kind of like a wiki where you can like link things and you can jump between Oh, like things. the hyperlinking, not the hyperlinking, but just the hashtag yeah. deal where you can, like, like Apple's notes does now. But um, right. yeah, so for those of you out in the internet land, Chandu is is pure minimalist <laughs> with, with the notepad text editor app. And so not, no frills, just here's yeah. the ideas and then, and then take it. Here, I can, really cool. I can put a link in the, yeah, uh, in the private chat, but like. And then I'll, and then I'll share it in the comments. Yeah. Con, so. Okay, so then. It's, I mean, this is the like the app app that it's like an extension on mm -hmm. um on my text editor that i use so like that it it so if you've heard of like things like obsidian it's kind of yes. like that but mm -hmm. i mean yeah i'm not a power user like it has those features i wish i could use them better but i don't um yeah yeah, yeah down the rabbit hole of productivity youtube content uh, right you know, users. Is, is where I got um, introduced to Obsidian. I'm like, this is way over my brain capacity. Um, yeah, I, I think I need something a little bit more simple. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah. but it's very powerful, Obsidian and all that does. So, yeah. so yeah, if you're into coding, then you'll probably will be familiar with some of those things like Trello or or some of those like um, productivity apps, as, as they Trello say. Trello is amazing. I mean, yes. I know. Kelsey has a whole soapbox about it. Like, so like, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, Trello is great. I use it for like more project management kind of things mm -hmm. uh like you know yeah but i haven't yet like gotten as far as needing a workflow mm -hmm. um because you know i'm doing it for myself and yeah yeah so so let's let's talk about that actually if if i if i may i'll build off of that project management you said some key words there that i think are really important i feel like now in my in my old age and the current wisdom as things are, <laughs> Kelsey, okay, Kelsey's about to about to give. Uh, oh, we'll see. We you might have to see that for your stream, Kelsey. <laughs> so I, I uh, still you, want to hear it. So yeah, you, you, say, you, you said the name and also and poof, <laughs> they yep. appeared. But um, but yeah. So so what I've learned is that project management. Not what I've learned. What I'm starting to, to think about lately is that as I have certain like neurodivergent, you know, um obstacles or health issues or as i get older and things cognitively start to decline i start to wonder that my old way of just jumping in like you all and doing the hybrid of whatever i feel like doing right now whether i want a thumbnail or maybe i don't thumbnail maybe i just because i'm the creator I'm, I'm all passing you know organically create the comic and then i will figure it out as i go now i'm starting to realize that when i have fatigue issues or when i have um focus issues or when i'm don't feel I have as much time or luxury as I thought I would have, you know, before I kind of, you know, my future self is, is wanting to go back in time and kick my past selves. But because it's like, Hey, if you would have scripted this or outlined it 
or use the project management type of approach to it, or um, even like the thumbnails to work out some of these wrinkles ahead of time. You know, like the current stuff that maybe would like to just be able to jump in and create wouldn't be still struggling with some of these hiccups. You know, so now it's like, okay, maybe it is time to go back to the old convention of doing thumbnails, working on a script or outline. So that way I don't, it's less mental labor that I have to carry in the current time. So I can get to the good stuff of drawing and working on the comics. So that's something that I'm starting to play with, with, with this 100 day challenge, the 100 day um, project challenge that started February 18th. So I, I'm doing my whole 100 day project is to figure out what my 100 day project is. And by that, I mean better habits that allow me to be more productive and be able to get to some of those things that I want to get to when it feels like time is getting more, you know, not more, it's getting less. Time is getting less, but yet there's more that I want to do. And so mm -hmm. I was like, how do I, how do I do this? So, um, yeah. So, okay. Project management. Um, I feel like that is something that I'm finally coming to grips with. And so if for those people who are out there who are more, organized or more able to if you have good project management skills or you have a friend that maybe doesn't feel as strongly um capable in the creative aspect but they're they're like just spot on when it comes to organizing and structure maybe that's that's where you two can help each other out you know um um i love just building stories and collaborating with friends and, and talking comics and all that though but yeah i wish i had somebody that knew how to keep things you know, that, that's what Sydney is, you know, you know, our fearless leader, because, um, yeah, without Sydney, I, I, I don't think we'd be here tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, moving on to another question here. Um, uh, so this is more of an ending question. So I'll, I'll put a pin on that. I don't know what time we're going to because we started late. So how are you all feeling? Let me check in with you two right now. You good? Okay. All right, then. Let's talk about current work. Like, like, like you mentioned that you're you're working on the story with Jack, but so for Chandu, um, what we'll do is talk about what you have coming up that you that you what you can spoil because we don't give away all your secrets. But um, so be thinking about that while I pivot to Danielle, um, uh, and ask Danielle, what are you currently working on now when you do have the time to work on your own work, and what do you want people to know about that? Yeah, um, yeah. Like I shared before, like I'm redoing my um, uh, Welcome to Florida, which was originally a web comic, um, but I've just gotten like tired of having to spend time coloring. And I think that just eats up a lot of my like, time. I could be making and creating the actual like, story. Um, let me share that again. Um, so I'm redoing it in like a standard um, book size or like graphic novel size um, in black and white. So I'm just screen toning and inking and focusing on that. And hopefully someday I'll be able to like print print it out. Yeah, so that's where I'm at uh, right now. Um, otherwise I wanna create like a mini comic um, at some point this year, but I'm not sure on what or like, uh, yeah, what exactly? But here's more of a side by side. Um, like here's the the hammerhead shark panel, and then me redrawing it on the right side. And I added some more details in between that. Um, I added some more panels. So that's what I'm finding out. Like I was really intimidated originally by like laying out panels. And like a comic book page, a graphic novel page, um, because the canvas is so open. Um, but I'm learning to play around and show more, or be able to show more uh, with the comic uh, panel page layout. So do you find your efficiency of working in animation, having to be efficient, having to be very selective and, and, and concise, um, do you find that um, helping you with this approach? with the intimidation of an open canvas and I think that's really helped me because I was I'm like a storyboard artist so like I draw out to like really sketchy sketchily uh the chronological like order of events but I also can like focus in like 
I'm drawing the camera, like what the camera sees, like in focus, and I like do zooms or like pans. So that's really helped me with like transitions in uh, the comic making process. Okay. Well, um, let me ask you this question because I'm about to go to the category of unsolicited suggestions because I I'll, I'll ask I don't ask permission. I just kind of give out unsolicited advice, and then I apologize later on. Um, but mini comic wise how many pages are you thinking that you might want to try for a mini comic and are you talking digest size or are you talking about full-on small mini like that quarter that quarter full small or micro mini uh, yeah this this isn't going to be a mini comic i was for a mini comic i was thinking of like you know, like 30 something pages i wanted to be like concise but like i have such a hard time like being concise mm -hmm. um, with my like stories unless i'm given like a direction Gotcha. Yeah. So thirty pages is quite is quite the feat for a mini comic, yeah. though, which is which is going to be very robust, which is awesome, by the way. Um, also, um, here comes an unsolicited um, suggestion part. While this is not going to be a mini comic that you're working on currently with the Florida comic, if you want to also have something to show off, you can always do an ash can, which is basically like you know a little bit of a eight and a half, full and a half, or digest size or to preview it and a little behind the scenes of the work that you're doing in progress, as well as some of your thoughts and kind of just teases people along the way, you know, um, but 30 pages for a mini comic that that's, I can't wait to see that story. I think that's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. I like when I can get a hold of those types of um, such volume, you know what I mean? So, but, but this might be a good time to mention our discord where you can, if you join the, the C3 discord, you can actually ask for tips and advice and, and workshop different things in there. So if you're stuck on prompts and all that, um, so I use that thing to, to brain dump all the time. Um, so I should probably have a link, <laughs> but um, I'm afraid to, to leave my page. So if you're in the comment section, you want to throw a link up for our Discord. Actually, just go through the Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you're already checking us out on um, in Instagram. We'll let you. We'll email them. And that'll get you the Discord link. So I think that's how we're doing things these days. But um, so a thirty-page mini comic, but don't know what the prompt or idea is yet, or you're just not ready to share it right now with us. I, I, I don't have like okay. I don't have an idea. Like I have a I have a million ideas, but like they're all like so big, it's so open-ended, and they go like it could be like books, you know. Um, but like I when I go to like space or like C three, I'm like. I'm buying like these smaller comics and mm -hmm. I really like enjoy them. They're not they're not graphic novels. They're just like thirty some odd pages and it tells a concise story and yeah. I'd like to create something like that. Yeah, in that thing. You know. Gotcha. Yeah, don't do what I do when I when I'm like I have so many stories that I'm gonna make my own anthology with all yeah. these different parts, but there's not a full complete story in there, you know. So you wanna get like a one and done and that way that person, the reader walks away feeling satiated and feeling like they've 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 really like gotten their um their time's worth i guess is is what i'm th i'm guessing here um awesome okay well daniel thank you so much uh okay chandu i've given you some time to think are you ready because i forgot the question already so you're gonna have to help me out <laughs> it was something about what i'm currently working on um yeah, so or, or, or or if, since you did talk about it a little bit with, with what you're working on, Jack, or what you're yeah. looking forward to working on, maybe once that wraps, um, your choice. Yeah. So yeah, I have been working on this one longer form thing for forever. You know, I, I get, I put in like maybe an hour or hour and a half a day. So like, you know, it takes forever. But um, so yeah, the thing I'm working on with Jack is almost done inking. Um, so I'm done. Uh, seven of eight pages are done, so I have, I have to still do the eighth page. Um, but then I'm also working on my own comic um, that's called All Our Monsters. Um, and it's basically the story of this young non-binary kid who basically comes into this power. And, um, and it it's like the first issue doesn't really uh, explain what it is like, but then like you you have to like discover as you read. Um, but the premise of the whole thing has to do with generational trauma and how 
uh, in this fictitious world, every few generations that that particular generation has gets the power to heal that trauma. So, yeah, but I'm I have like three issues scripted um, and then like but only one inked so far. <laughs> three issues <laughs> so like, scripted and one inked. Uh oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Dude, hoping I am to, shaped like, now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to give me some trauma because I because I because I I'm just like shaking my head. I'm like, oh, I've only got like all this productivity done and, and so much mileage on my on my awesome project. No, the premise sounds sounds uh, sounds very deep. Um, you know, as a person who also has to explore those themes in my memoir, you know, in my, in my thesis. What well, um, you know, wow. It's so relevant. Yeah, I can only hope yeah. I can do justice yeah. to it. But um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, and, that, and to your point earlier, like you know, the the reason I have that scripted is because like it prevents me from going off on tangents and being like, oh, I'm working on this issue, but what if I did this whole page again in a different way? And like you know, I'm, I keep circling in the same spot. So like I'm like, okay, if I at least have the script, then I. I don't have an excuse to like not draw it out. Um, so just keeping myself accountable. Yeah. Awesome. I wonder if I could actually link or show um, if I could find it. My actual comic is called Mixtape Blues, It'd be about mixed race, and also it does start to wander into generational traumas, things of that nature. Um, you know, the, uh, when the pandemic and other things happened, a lot of people especially nowadays, find themselves being diagnosed with neurodivergency, you know, and, and ADHD and, other, and all kinds of other things. And a lot of times the root tends to be trauma and other things. So um, the fact that people are more vulnerable and able to talk about it or willing to talk about it is uh, very important. And I feel like it um, should definitely be on the table as long as people are, are, are open to it and don't mind um, sharing, you know, obviously with consent. So. All right, for a minute there, no one was saying anything. I thought um, I was talking on mute, <laughs> but I found it. So, okay, uh, let me go here real quick to the to the just the um, front page, and this is going to be a this is going to show you like my process to making comics, which is a lot different than some of what we talked about, but just to show people that you can make comics in any way you want to. So let's see here. Let me see if this works. Are we are we seeing this? Let me get back to the thing. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, you know, I don't know if I should do a trigger warning or anything like that because right now this is just about being mixed race. We haven't gotten into the weeds yet. So I'm about six pages in, but this is literally drawn on legal pad with um, ballpoint pen markers, and then some of the text is is um as we get further along is more done on the iPad. And then eventually I start working on the iPad and start doing a hybrid of analog and digital. So here's our cover. And I, this is my first time trying this app, uh, Global Comics. So, so I don't even know how to actually open it up properly, as you can tell. <laughs> so, but um, I'll just scroll through here and we'll just leave it at thumbnails. So. And basically mixed media, I guess. Post-its, torn up post-its, dollar, you know, going to Dollar Tree and grabbing line paper and tearing it up and drawing on that and mixing it up and everything like that. I don't enjoy my lettering at all, but um, it's something that I was like, why? I wish I could find some typefaces. In fact, this might come back to when I was asking about typefaces that look more natural because I didn't want to have like a clean, pristine typeface when it, when this stuff is more, um, you know, organic looking and all that. So, oh, I just figured out how to, how to um, zoom in on, but it's really raw as you can tell. So again, there's more than one way to make a comic. So but anyways, um, I'll stop sharing that. And at, we're at the eight o'clock mark. Um, so how about we go ahead and maybe if there's, let me see if there's any questions from the audience. If there's no questions from the audience, then um, it just can be dangerous. 
So tangents can be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I like tangents. I don't care. So I'm a rebel. <laughs> but um, let's talk about uh, where we can where we can find you all. Um, so again, if you want to talk more with not just our creators here, but many, many, many other creators locally, or you're in the Midwest and all that, check out the C3 um, Instagram, as well as, you know, feel free to email the C3 email. I believe there's some banners up there that have the information and you can go ahead and talk shop and maybe talk about making comics. Also, we have our monthly meetups, which is usually the first Sunday of every month. So the next one will be in March, I believe, as long as it doesn't fall around any, like, any Cadbury bunny time and eggs and things like that nature, right? I guess, which I have no idea when that holiday is, but, um, or, or any like type of, um, uh, spring equinox or whatever. If, if spring even has an equinox, I have no idea. I haven't talked to spring lately. So, but, um, now that I'm rambling and my, oh, my, my husky just got here. So that means it's time to get to the social medias. Okay. Danielle, where can we find you once again? And, and where do you want people to go to check out your work? Uh, yeah, I'm primarily on Instagram at Danielle Dean. Um, I also have a link tree in my bio, my uh, link tree, um, where you can go on my website. Um, if you're more on Twitter, I also have Twitter, YouTube, all that uh, good stuff. Awesome. So all the social media. So, um, and will you have that beautiful record album comic? Any copies of that at, at Space or any upcoming shows um, in, the, in this 2024 year? Is there more? Oh yeah, I still have extra extra okay, copies okay. of that, so I'll be okay. All right, I'll all right, all right. Those. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then you all can see in, um, in person what we were talking about. Okay, Chandu, where can we find you, my friend? I think the best place would be my website, https dot or kennedy dot art, um, and if you go to slash links. Um, most of my links are there. I rolled my own link tree, <laughs> but um, otherwise you can find me on Instagram too as uh, at tenity.art. Okay, there there goes the link there. Um, I didn't have your link handy, Daniel, but you mentioned Instagram first and then and then through that portal, we can go ahead and find on the rest of you. Um, I am JM Hunter. Uh, let's see, I've got Kofi. Or Ko-Fi, whatever um, it's called. That is where you can find me sometimes. Um, Hunter Art Lab on YouTube. You can go back and look at my archive of videos and other interviews I've done. I am definitely thinking about bringing back the YouTube um, channel and working on that. But otherwise, a lot of times you'll see me hanging out here on um, on stream or with uh, C3 events um, you know, as one of the exec board members and just a lover of comics and zines. So, um and right now I'm in the process of creating other identities for different art styles and exploring that too. So, so maybe I'm in some anthologies and maybe I'm in some of the comics you're reading and you, and you just don't know it's me. So, because I decided to come up with like seven different pen names and I just feel like doing it because yeah, <laughs> midlife crisis, why, why not? <laughs> Identity crisis with my midlife crisis. So we're going to just do a mashup. Anyways, thank you both so much for joining us and talking about your process and sharing your work with us. Um, very elegant, very, very, very nice. Um, I'm in great company and I'm actually inspired. And I think some of our audience was also inspired. So for the rest of you out in the internet land, stay tuned for Kelsey um, eventually on a stream and talking about Trello, I guess maybe. Maybe that's what we have to look forward to. I'm not sure, I'm just assuming. So um, don't hold Kelsey to that, you know, so. But, um, oh, I'm yeah. going to. <laughs> so because i have to hear this rant i always enjoy a good kelsey rant so if you want to get a good kelsey rant you can also check us out in the discord or you know at the um, ig page so anyways um in closing thank you so much and everyone have a great night thanks jam bye bye everyone